Hello darlings, hello lovers, good to see you. Welcome to today's Couple with Katie. I'm very excited right now. I'm just doing the, um, the final prep for my workshop, which is at 12 o'clock. My 2020, <clears throat> excuse me, 2020 Reflections workshop. Got a bunch of women signed up. I'll be excited to see who actually shows up live and there's still time to join. So if you fancy spending 90 minutes with me, sat in front of my Christmas tree <laughs> at 12 o'clock today, uh, we're gonna, I'm going to take you through a very gentle exercise to help you to just reflect on 2020 and what it was about for you and, and what you're taking from this year into next year. Um, the caveat is this is not a visioning workshop. It's going to be, it's purely focused on reflecting. It's very much about receiving this year, bringing this year to a close, and the information that we gather in this workshop will inform your vision for 2021, and that's a separate workshop that we're doing in the beginning of January. So if you wanna join me at lunchtime today, I've put the link in here, and uh, you're so welcome to come join us. And I thought in advance of that workshop, I would just share what came to me yesterday when I was doing my own 2020 reflections. So I've taken myself through my own process. This is a process that I do uh, every year and it's evolved and um, become in some ways more elaborate, elaborate and in some ways more streamlined year on year. But ever since I can remember, I've been really committed to looking at the year that's been and setting my goals for the year to come. I mean, I've got journals. In fact, I might dig one out for my workshop today, but I've got journals from when I was like 10 years old where I would, I would write my New Year's resolutions. And at the end of the year, I say at how I achieved those resolutions. And they're always pretty similar year on year when I was a little girl. Um, uh, but it's just been a habit of mine for as long as I can remember. So I spent yesterday, I completely cleared my diary and it was a day very special just for me. I lit my candles. I played my, my beautiful music, I made yummy herbal teas, and I just sat with my pens and paper and my journal, and all the tools that I use to reflect on the year. So I go through my calendar, I, I look at all of my photos and my phone, I go through all my finances. Um, I, I kind of, I literally look at my year from all different perspectives, and it really brings this full, full picture of what 2020 was about. Lorraine, uh, Lorraine, you actually, because you're an evolution member, you don't need to, you don't need to register, right? You'll, you can, you're in anyway because I put, I've emailed the details out to all the evolution members, so don't worry about that, darling. Um, anyway, so yesterday I, yeah, I spent the day reflecting, and I've got to tell you, I'm completely fessing up here, I was really nervous to do my reflections on this year because my masculine wanted to be able to sit down and create a long list of achievements. <laughs> because ever since I was a little girl, like I was saying, I would set my goals and I would achieve my goals. And that's what I have done. And now I'm a, a wise old 46 year old woman and I still want to sit down and reflect on the goals and intentions I set, and I want to better tick them off. And I kind of knew, I didn't kind of know, I knew that pretty much all of my intentions for 2020 totally went out the window as they did for most of us. And you know, there's a couple of things we sort of got started with in the early part of the year, but it, it's all ended. And everything that I find so much joy in, my like live events, live speaking events, um, hosting retreats, traveling on my own with my family, weekends away, all that stuff, all the stuff that really brings me my joy all got canceled this year. So I, I didn't want to, <laughs> I didn't want to do my 2020 reflections because I thought that, um, it would just be a big long list of disappointment or just lots of blank pages, like nothing to tell. And what a surprise I had. And what an amazing heart opening experience yesterday was for me. I was in awe of what 2020 
was all about. And I could, oh my God, I can feel the emotion really coming up now. Oh, 2020 was about the feminine rising. The feminine was rising this year and she will continue to rise because, because we're moving into a totally new energy now. I don't know if you can feel that. Um, the way we have run our planet, you know, enough is enough. Things have got to change. And this was a year of like almost the dark side, like the Kali energy of the feminine was coming out in force this year. Because the feminine is freaking powerful. If you think the feminine is soft and gentle and no, I mean, yes, yeah, she is those things, but she means business. She stands up for herself. She stands up for the truth of who we are. And when enough is enough, she steps forward and she says in no uncertain terms, enough. And the enough comes from the deepest place of love, right? It's just from a place of pure, pure love. It's like enough. This is not serving us anymore. It's time to do things different. And apparently, astrologically, 2020 was always going to be a major year of chaos. There was, it was always going to be a year of endings, a year of... Um, struggle and difficulty we just didn't we couldn't have imagined that that would be a pandemic but when the feminine rises and when the feminine rises from the dark side saying enough no more we feel it and didn't we feel it like it was enough no more to racism it was enough no more to um governments we can't trust and sort of narcissistic leadership <laughs> It was enough no more to, to stripping the planet bare and not respecting her, you know? And, and what came forward in this pandemic that forced us to stay inside, to allow the planet to rest, to look within and do our healing work and notice the systems and structures and paradigms that we, and habits of behavior that we've got going on that are sabotaging ourselves and our planet, it was a time to go within and start looking at that stuff bravely. And if you're watching this or if you're in my community, you are one of those people who bravely started to do the inner work, started to change her mind, started to see things differently, started to approach life differently. We were, you know, the feminine forced us to slow down from a place of love. She said no more with mindlessly spinning your wheels and going out there and being busy and being on that hamster wheel and doing life as you always have without thinking about it. It's not working anymore. So you're gonna stay home and you're gonna think about your life. And you're gonna think about your contribution to this planet and you're gonna respect your health and the health of other people. And you're gonna go within and you're gonna do the healing work because the planet needs healed people. The planet needs conscious people, awake people. So here you go, here's a year to do that. And hey, Linz, <laughs> hey, Wendy. So here's a year for that. And the feminine will continue to rise. And as we move out of the chaos and as the Kali energy subsides, I really believe that in 2021 and going forward, there's going to be obviously that there's going to be a hangover of that, I reckon, for quite some time. But the fem there's no denying the feminine has taken over. The feminine is in charge. She said enough. And we're going to start moving into a place of doing life from the feminine. So way more collaboration. Your creativity is gonna be absolutely key. It's gonna be about, and this is what this year has been, it's like to break any habit, it takes some time, right? It's like working a new muscle. This year we've been breaking the habit of the relentless doing, and the feminine is the doing being masculine, and the feminine has been inviting us into being. So this has been a year of learning how to be. And as we learn to be, we can step into our more aligned self. We can start showing up more authentically. We can start being who we came here to be in the world rather than just that relentless doing, pushing, striving, competing, 
doing what we think we should do to keep up appearances, tick the boxes, da 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 da. So we've been practicing learning how to be this year because it's time for us to show up more on purpose now, more aligned, not unconscious. And so, this is, this is all that has been coming to me, right? And so yesterday I sit down and I did my reflections for the year thinking, oh God, I don't want to. And my masculine, as I said, was in charge. And oh my God, I filled up these pages and my heart was just bursting with gratitude for what this year was about for me. And, <laughs> okay, so let me just go to my notes real quick because um, I made some notes from yesterday that I wanted to share with you. I set words and intentions for the year, but before I share with you what came from those, I wanted to share two pieces that came up for me as basically they, uh, on reflection, I can see they were absolutely my survival kit for 2020. And the first was surrender. What, no, so surrender was not my word for the year. Uh, my word for the year was discipline, and I'm gonna tell you about that in a second. Surrender. Surrender was how I got through this year. Pretty much every minute of every day was a surrendering experience. We even chose to get a puppy this year and everything about bringing him into our family, which has been such joy. And, uh, you know, it's been, our dog's called Boomer and it's been the year of the Boomer. Um, <laughs> but surrender. I wonder if you can relate. Anybody watching live right now can, or on replay, just type hashtag replay and let me know. Like, was this not a year that's teaching us to surrender? And is that not one of the most powerful feminine qualities that there are? Surrender. Uh, gratitude. Gratitude was also a major part of my survival kit this year. So I, I did actually set the intention for my spiritual practice this year to be um, led by gratitude. Um, and boy, was it led by gratitude this year. I mean, you know, it was all about having gratitude for every little minute detail of my life in the day to day. It was the ability to sit and look out the window and just notice, you know, perhaps how the sun was shining off a particular leaf and how the, you know, the, the breeze was swaying the, the, the leaves of the tree, like to that depth of detail, gratitude was important to me because, you know, I wasn't on a plane. I'm, I'm meant to be in Australia right now. Like I wouldn't be running my workshop today had this pandemic not happened because I'm meant to be, hello boomer, because I'm meant to be in Australia with my family right now. You know, I wasn't on planes traveling around the world. I wasn't off speaking. I was meant to be in LA earlier this year speaking at an event. I was meant to be running a couple of retreats, all this stuff, like that's my joy. I didn't get to do that. So gratitude was a huge part of my survival tool kit this year, noticing every little minute thing that I do have in my life. And there's so much. So the time with our kids this year has been incredible. Four months of homeschooling, cooking with them because they weren't allowed to cook at school, even when they went back to school, you know. Um, the walks with my husband, we got the dog and suddenly we're like walking twice a day is a huge part of our lifestyle but he wasn't in the office, so we, he was sleeping in a bit. We were doing walks in the morning. We would do an early evening walk every day. This year was meant to be about connection for us and, and intimacy, and we had planned all these things from dance classes to trips away and so on, and dinner parties and all sorts of fun things to, to strengthen our relationship and our intimacy. And I thought that when I sat down to do my 2020 reflections, that there would be none of that present in my reflection, but actually it just came in a different way. And we had more time together than ever. And, you know, we talked a lot. We just hung out. We worked from the same space. We had lunches together. Like we never got to do that before. It was really precious. So there's so much to be grateful for this year. And in terms of the words that I set for myself, so I had an intention to create time and space this year for planning. Time and space felt really important to me. I wanted to create margins of time in my life. Uh, I wanted to, I noticed there was a pattern with me of, I get, because I'm, I'm an ideas girl, and I get this idea and I'm like, oh, 
I'm gonna, I'm gonna run that workshop, or I'm gonna run that retreat, or I'm gonna pull this coaching program together. And I go, right, I'll launch it and we'll do it in, we'll do it next week, or we'll do it in three weeks time. Um, if it was a retreat, I might give you a couple months warning, but it was always quite lastminute.com. And that stressed me out, it stressed my clients out. <laughs> it's like, it just, it just wasn't planned. And, and I noticed that my, I, I had been noticing that my, um, my nervous system was always kind of on edge. And I'd often wake up in the middle of the night, kind of a little feeling a bit unsafe and out of control because I didn't have really yummy, healthy, um, empowered masculine structures in place to support the creativity of my feminine, to, cr to support the inspiration and to, and to create a safe container for me to sort of give birth to my new wonderful ideas and you know, bring them to life. Uh, and so my, my desire this year was for literally the words from my journal, time and space. Wow, <laughs> I got a shit ton of time and space this year. And it was such a gift because I did do the planning. I had time to think. I created new things. I launched new things, but I did it in a way, not but, and I did it in a way that felt joyful, that wasn't rushed, that felt aligned, inspired. It felt good and it felt easy. So that's been a huge blessing. Um, I created a lot of new stuff in my business this year. Um, I really hate the word pivot because it's been the word of the year for everybody. And yet I pivoted left, right and center. Uh, my other word for the year was discipline. I didn't want that word for this year. That's the word that I received. That was my guidance. I shared that when I ran my, my workshop last year at the beginning of 2020, um, because part of my, my process for calling in a new year is to choose a word for the year but also to allow the word to choose you. And discipline chose me and I was like, no, it's very masculine. It feels very tight and restrictive. I don't want discipline. But actually the discipline was about me um, allowing my empowered masculine, sort of as I was just saying, my empowered masculine to, to come in and with love and gentleness and, and uh, tenderness create help me to you know create what I wanted to create so um, discipline became like we went into a pandemic and back in March when we were told to um, to isolate what was the word uh, what what's the word um, not isolate, isolate but uh, <coughs> quarantine no it wasn't even quarantine it was something else Anyway, I didn't like the word. See, I, I don't resonate with the word. I can't even remember it. We were told to stay home. <laughs> and the word that felt good for me was to cocoon. So I created a daily, every single morning at 8 a.m., I did a self-love ritual live every day for about two months. And it was called Cocoon and Cuppa with Katie. And that discipline having to show up every day to serve my community was the, not just a huge gift to my community and it expanded my community. And I've met some amazing women this year. I mean, considering we've stayed home this year, I have expanded my, my business community. I've expanded my friendships. I, I've made new neighborhood friends. We've got a neighborhood WhatsApp that I set up. Like Relationships were formed this year, even though we've all been home. A huge piece to be grateful for. Um, but uh, what was I saying? Yeah, so I was doing the, my discipline was my daily lives. And what a gift to my community, what a gift to me. I mean, talk about, I mean, that was my spiritual practice. My spiritual practice in those first couple of months of the pandemic was me showing up and serving my community, trusting my ability to channel information to not, like my masculine was freaking out, going, what are you gonna talk about? What are you gonna say? And like, I, I didn't have content. I didn't know what I was gonna talk about, but somehow every day I showed up and the teachings came through and the healing came through, the transmissions came through, and I learned to trust that I could, I, I was able to, to do that. And, uh, and it was a healing for others and it was a deep healing for myself on so many levels. It was really interesting to discover that my spiritual practice was very much about being of service this year. Um, 
and the discipline that came from running those daily lives because I felt like my calling was what can I do to help with this pandemic like little old me what can I do and that's what I did um, that's what felt good and easy for me uh, and true for me uh, but what came from that then was very regular lives like even this now the cup with Katie is because of those early cocoon and cuppa sessions at the beginning of the pandemic and I've done various things all year but I've been live all year I've been sharing all year I've been teaching all year consistently and um, that's been a beautiful discipline and, uh, and it's allowed me to serve so many more women as a result so yeah um, I could go on and on suffice to say my fear of sitting down and doing my 2020 reflections uh, <laughs> was all ego uh, it, I had I've achieved a lot this year a lot a lot a lot but it didn't look like a long list it, it felt like a feeling this is what I mean about the feminine rising when I sat yesterday and reflected it wasn't so much about writing lists although I did fill my pages with lots of writing it was more about feeling the juiciness of the simplicity that was my life in 2020 um, I could share more and I probably will over the coming days and I certainly will share a little bit in my workshop today but in a way I wanted to share this now in this live because I want the workshop today to be very practical for you who's doing it so I don't want to be sat here like doing all this talking I want to take you through a process if that's what we're going to be doing at lunchtime today I would love for you by the end of the process to have your own powerful reflections on the year and to be able to then use that information to call in 2021 for yourself whatever that's going to be and it will be a continuation of the feminine rising that is for sure so if you can join me today, the link is above or below. Have a look, there'll be a link. And uh, I would love to have you on board. We start at midday UK time. So that's like uh, an hour and 15 minutes from now. Yeah, so just register and I'll see you then. Have a beautiful, beautiful day. Mwah. I'll see you again soon. Bye.